Our ministerial, ministerial graduates have selected one of their own to answer the call, and that is Leslie Goodwin. And Leslie is from the New Vision Center for Spiritual Living in Phoenix, Arizona. She's been actively involved in leadership at the center and has even moved into a more important role at this time as the center is between ministers. And above all of that, she is a wonderful musician, a singer, and a songwriter, and has a whole slew of kids in her house. <laughs> And so speaking on, on behalf of all of the ministerial graduates to answer the call, let's welcome Leslie Goodwin. So my husband and I have five kids, mostly grown now. And it is a, a topic that gets joked about quite a lot. People have asked me a number of times if I came to ministerial school to hide from them all. <laughs> I have five kids and I'm fiercely independent. So what that meant was that as I started the school of ministry, I thought, I got this. One hand tied my, behind my back, blindfolded, on my own, no help, don't need it, it's fine, I got this. Famous last words. <laughs> but what I've learned through this program, through the School of Ministry, is that nothing happens in a vacuum. No one does it alone. Certainly none of us have gotten to graduation by ourselves. Everything, everything is communal. So as I spoke with my beloved classmates, as I invited them to share with me what they would like to hear today, this is what came together of the things we've figured out along the way. Thank you to our partners, our families and our friends for holding us up through these years, for doing more than your share of the dishes, for listening to us rant about whatever had pushed our buttons in that moment <laughs> and still encouraging us to persevere. Thank you to our children for recognizing that after a lifetime of being put first, it was mom's turn to chase her own dreams and for being willing to take a back seat for a little while for the greater good. Thank you to the professors, the registrars, the mentoring ministers who've taken time out of their unbelievably busy lives to coach us through this beautiful and volatile time. Thank you for scraping us off the floor and stapling us back together when necessary, for encouraging us and believing in us and inspiring us every step of the way, for treating us with respect and for showing us how the pros do it with grace and style and so much joy. A deep thank you to Dr. Kathy Hearn, our fearless leader and apparently high priestess. <laughs> I've heard it said that Dr. Kathy drops little truth bombs everywhere she goes, and it is true. I didn't, oh, I might have pushed her button, but I did not install it. <laughs> you are here to be a reliable context of spiritual truth. And woe to the student who heard, this cannot be. <laughs> Dr. Kathy, you are the voice inside our heads. <laughs> and we love you very much. Most essentially, we have come to the grateful recognition that nothing we do will ever be a solo endeavor, for it all takes place within the context of the infinite one, the infinite presence, acting in and through and as us for the highest and best of all humanity. It is a joy and an honor to re represent this amazing class. To you I say, you are each beautiful and unique 
with your own special brand of genius. Be who you are. Be all of who you are. I agree with Reverend Howard Thurman when he said what the world needs is more people who have come alive. And you are brilliantly alive. And I thank you. It is really interesting to be representing this beautiful class of 11 women as we've gone through this final year of ministerial school together. In this cultural climate, it's been crazy. It's been interesting. It's been wonderful. It's been said that our class isn't very diverse, but I disagree. We are white, Latina, African American, Indigenous, First Nations, and Native American. We've worked in law enforcement, engineering, business, finance, healthcare, education, the arts. In our years together, we've submitted homework from four continents. <laughs> and a lot of that was Sonia. <laughs> We range in age from 34 to, we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> We've mothered and stepmothered 32 children and been mother figures to countless more. We are straight, we are bisexual, we are on the spectrum, we are exploring. <laughs> yeah. This, divini this divinity, yes. This diversity represents the future of Centers for Spiritual Living. We're the microcosm of the macrocosm. And yet, many of us have been discouraged from following this ministerial path somewhere along the way because we didn't fit somebody's idea of what a CSL minister should look like. Too old, too young, too political, not political enough too conservative, too liberal, too controversial, too brash, in my case, a little too loud. <laughs> I myself was once told, you can't go to ministerial school. Who will take care of your kids? But if we're a... <laughs> but if we're as serious about diversity as we say we are, then it is incumbent upon us to do better, to make sure that every person from every walk of life that walks into a Center for Spiritual Living sees themselves represented in our leadership. Yes. I personally feel immeasurably blessed that my first CSL minister was a youngish woman funny, wildly authentic, and a little irreverent. <laughs> Looking at her example, I could see that there was a place for someone like me in the ministry of this movement. Thank you, Dr. Michelle. Thank you for reminding me and all of us time and again that spirit has need for us exactly as we are or we wouldn't be called. Every growing spiritual leader needs that message. We're a philosophy that embraces people that don't feel that they're reflected anywhere else in society. And there's more than enough room for all of us in the ministry of CSL. For every political preference, for every race, for every nationality, for every form of sexual expression, for everyone, there is a space in this movement. And so to the ministers in the room, I implore you, do your best not to limit future spiritual leaders to what has gone before. Be open to the new. We're on the cutting edge of consciousness. So it makes sense that our growing spiritual leaders look like something we've never seen before. <laughs> to 
our fellow ministerial students that are still walking this path, here's our parting wisdom. Surrender everything. <laughs> Remember that the goal is to develop ministerial consciousness, not to graduate on a specific day or get a perfect score. Everything that happens, all the homework, all the classes, all the travel, all the internships, all of it is simply a catalyst for the work that's happening in our souls. Soak this time up. Soak up the friendships. Get to know yourself and wear smooth your rough edges. As my yoga teacher says, there's nowhere to go. You're already here. To the practitioners in the room who even made this moment be feeling the pull of the ministerial call, we offer this advice. Give yourself the space to live in the question. Let the, let the call pull you. Don't worry about when or how or where the money is going to come. When spirit is driving the bus, all things are provided. Just be open, and the miracles will occur for you. And to every beloved in this room, we offer this invitation. Question more. Question from a place of deep intellectual curiosity. Why do you believe what you believe? What do other people believe? Why do they believe that? What assumptions are underlying those beliefs? Resist the desire and the easiness of just repeating opinions you've heard. Do your own research. Do your own study. The possibility of having a new thought does not come from sameness. And as we know in this teaching, one new thought changes everything. Thank you. Thank you.